Hello everybody, it's Cathy Lindbergh here from Eagle Rocks, Edisburg, South Australia. Put together a short video for you to show you what I've been up to lately. I used Posca acrylic paint pens today as I need to stop and start a fair bit. Here we are, I've done a freehand drawing of a feather. I usually like to cut templates as I use them as a reference later on if I want to replicate the same design. You don't need to use feathers, you can use any uh, design that you like. Anything that can be used as a silhouette and look good is a classic example of, of anything. Keep it simple, the more complicated it is, the harder it is and sometimes it doesn't look quite as striking. I'm using a rock. This side is the unsealed uh, side and this is a painted side obviously. Show you my template. I start off on the unsealed side. That's what I'm using as an example today. I'm applying the first little bit of paint, keeping it reasonably wet. The second colour goes on, making sure to overlap slightly and to try and keep it as wet as possible at the line edge of the other colour. The reason for this is that you can get different effects from marbling, bleeding or in my case you'll see that I'm about to pick up a hairdryer and I'll be using the airflow to speed up the process. It also helps to dry the paint in a quicker rate. I'm halfway through the third colour now. I'm using these colour combinations for your benefit mostly so that you can see the different effects. You don't need to make it quite so obvious. You can blend your different colour ranges, rainbow effects or whatever. Working on an unsealed rock, as you know, the rock absorbs the paint and dries quicker than if it was on a sealed or a shiny smooth rock. So I'm having to apply quite a lot more amount of paint at the edge so that I've got something that's wet enough to cause the dribble effect that I'm going for today. Once again the hair dryer comes in handy. Just a little bit more paint, I'd like a few more drips. Only put paint in the area that you intend to put your design, otherwise you're only wasting paint. These Posca pens, if you haven't used them before, actually last quite a long while. You can do a lot of work with the one pen. There are the, the pinky red over the blue is quite obvious and, and striking not to everybody's taste but once again I'm doing this for the sake of the video today. Lastly the fourth colour you don't need to use four colours, you can use one, two, three, four, any number of colours you like in any colour combination that you like as well. There we go, that's four colours. I'm happy with 
the um, effect that the paint has given me. I get my tin plate out and I position it on the rock. Obviously you need to centre it and maybe put it on a slight diagonal, lean, whatever, whatever you prefer. I'm using a lead pencil because when I first started working with templates, particularly on a porous rock, um, if I was using a fine tip acrylic paint pen, it would bleed into the rock underneath the template. It wouldn't matter if I was using paper, cardboard, laminated, vinyl, plastic or whatever, it still had the same effect. So lead pencil is great. I don't know if you can pick up the actual outline there or not, um, but it's there. So then this is when I use the fine tip paint pen much easier than using a brush as you get a, a finer, more accurate line. You don't get overlapping or bulking up of paint so it's nice and smooth. It can be easily fixed or adjusted to whatever you feel you'd like it to look like. I take my time on fine edges. Um, I like to do the job once and not have to go back and fix. If you do make a mistake with these pens, you can easily go over the mistake with a colour that is um, underneath or, or next to or on top of what you're doing. I've discovered that even working with a black pen, if you do make a mistake and have to paint over it anywhere, the black actually doesn't come through the paint. So you can't see your mistake. So therefore, by the time you've finished your, your new project, don't ever have any fear if you've mucked it up a little bit. It won't matter. It can be easily fixed. Getting down to the lower part of the feather now. At the base, I'm not going to shape it into a traditional feather shape because on the bottom of a natural feather, quite often you get a very soft, downy type feather that goes in all directions and blows in the wind. And I'll be making that a, a small feature at the base of the feather so I, I don't cover over that area. Um, you'll see a little bit later in the video why. Now I'm going around the edges again, widening the edge. And this is so that when I fill in the larger black area on the majority of the rock, um, you don't accidentally slip and, and get black onto the coloured part of the feather. I wouldn't normally use a fine tip acrylic paint pen for the colouring at all, but I'm doing it for the sake of the video because I've got to stop and start with the filming of the, the video. It's the long way around going about doing what you want to do. You can quite easily use different acrylic paints with a brush to do the, the black area, outline area. When working with sealers on this, these particular rocks, uh, if you use a, a flat matte uh, non-shine type sealer, it will show uh, variations in paints from a paint pen uh, paint to say one that you would use for the brush. If you're using a high gloss, for some reason it seems to camouflage that and you can get away with it. So there we are, it's the edges all widened. I'm halfway through colouring in the outside area. Once again I said I would not normally do it like this with a fine tip pen.
nearly finished. Go over the areas that have already dried and make sure that there's been plenty of paint in, uh, put into all the little nooks and crevices, little holes that a natural rock would have. As I said, please remember that the rock I'm painting at the moment is not a smooth rock. It is a highly textured rock and is a very porous rock. get the opportunity to go around all the edges and make sure they're nice and sharp and clean and any adjustments that you don't like can be made at this stage. I'm just putting my template over. Um, I'm not sure what you call the bit that goes down the middle of the feather, but I'm going to be calling it a stem. Um, I'm just um, clarifying where I stop and start with this. I find by starting at the top and getting that accurate, because getting the position accurate, it's much easier than starting at the bottom and working up where you might get near the top and realise that you're actually not quite in line. If you're happy with what you've drawn for your template, um, I'd stick to that. But if you're off centre, it doesn't matter. Uh, no feather is identical. It gives a different aspect if it's slightly to the left or the right. So please don't think that you've made a mistake. Uh, at the end of the project you will find it will look just as lovely. I'm starting from the top and I'm working down with a very fine line. And from about a third of the way down I start to draw a second line parallel with the first line and, and that is so that when it is coloured in and filled it is a thicker stem at base as a natural feather, feather has and narrows to the top and then you just go over and check that you've got your line nice and even I'm referring to the three rocks on the right which are part of the selection that I showed you all on the rock painting page. I always feel, as I said earlier, that if you, you do something and you're really happy with it, then stick with it. There we go. Now it's starting to take shape a little more. At this stage I'm putting the artistic stripes on it, um, follow the angle that a natural feather would normally have which is from the stem going slightly higher to the edge. This is a really modern effect, you can do whatever you like, whatever your heart desires. Don't overdo it though, they say more is less. You can always go back and add something later at the end of it before you seal it. Now down the bottom here is this area that I showed you earlier, not the way a normal feather is shaped at the bottom. The reason for this is that I'm actually following very fine lines out from the stem to the outer edge of that greeny coloured paint and what that does is it leaves the finest line which looks like the very fine feathers that you find at the bottom of a feather. 
I leave them long at this stage because you can always add a little bit more paint and cut them off short or, or make them sort of look a bit more random, a bit more natural. It's a bit fiddly. You don't need to do this at all. It's just something that I like on my feathers. It's something that you'll fiddle with a little bit over the next few minutes until you're happy. Once completing one side, you do the same on the other. It works a little bit like a negative of a photo. You might be able to see what I've done already there. Uh, without zooming in, it softens it, you don't get a block colour and it resembles very, very fine feathers. Looking at the feather placement on the rock at the moment, I probably could have dropped it a half an inch. By doing that, I would have been able to get a, a bit more of the green into the main part of the feather. It doesn't matter, um, but looking at it now, I, I perhaps would have liked a, li a little bit more green into it. nearly finished the other side. Still trying to decide which ones I'll make shorter and which ones I'll leave longer. On a natural feather that have these little fluffy feathers at the base of them, some go up, some go down, they go all over the place. So um, don't be afraid to sort of mix it up a bit. It looks more natural that way. I'm sitting back now having a good look at my feather, deciding which bits I need to touch up or alter slightly. Just a little bit more here and there. Hmm, what have I done on these other three rocks? Is there anything on there that can give me an idea of how I would like to finish this one? I used to draw feathers a lot when I was a very young teenager. It probably was back in the years when I thought I was a bit of a hippie. <laughs> so I found it quite easily when I first tackled my first drawing. I don't usually sign my rocks on the front like this, uh, but I will be doing another feather on the back. So that if it's on a window sill, you can see a feather from inside and outside of the window. The first coat of high gloss, um, I think this one actually is a polyurethane varnish. It's a porous rock, so it will need probably a good three coats, allowing it to dry 100% in between coats. So there you are. That's my rock. That is uh, the first coat. It's still wet. You can see the little lines that I've put on the feathers. You don't need to do that either. 